triangle. So what exactly is the circumcenter? Well, the circumcenter is where the three perpendicular bisectors cross or intersect. So just to give you a rough idea here, perpendicular means that it's at a right angle. Bisector means that it bisects or cuts the side in half. So for example, if we want to bisect the side right here, we'd have to find the midpoint and we'd have to draw a line that's perpendicular, meaning at a right angle. Then what we could do is go to the other side of the triangle, find the midpoint again, and find the perpendicular okay, to that side. And then if we, same thing with the third side, if we find the midpoint and then draw a line that's perpendicular, if everything uh, goes well here in my diagram, they should all cross at the common point of intersection, which is called the circumcenter. And the significance of the circumcenter is, is that you can think of this as the center of a circle. If you measure the distance to any one of the three vertices, it's going to be the same, meaning that you can circumscribe or draw a circle around the triangle such that the vertices of the triangle are on the circle. But the basic thing that we're going to be doing here is finding the equations of two of the perpendicular bisectors. We're going to find out where those two equations cross. That point is going to be the circumcenter, this center of the circle here. So let's go ahead and jump into this particular example here, the first thing I want to do is I want to find the midpoint of side AB. So I'm just going to denote that as, that as capital M sub AB, so the midpoint of segment AB. Now when you find the midpoint, what you want to do is you want to find the average of the X's and the average of the Y's. So what we do is we add the X's together, negative 4 plus 2, and we divide by 2. Same thing with the Y coordinates. We Take the y's, we add them together, 2 plus 4, and we divide by 2. So just think of it like an average. Like if you get an 80% and 100%, you add those together, divide by 2, that's going to be your average, right? So here we've got uh, negative 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1. 2 plus 4 is 6, divided by 2 is 3. So the midpoint here should be at negative 1, positive 3, okay? Now my drawing's you know, a little bit off, I just did this freehand, but that's going to be the midpoint here. Now what we want to do is we want to find the perpendicular to this side AB. So we have to find the slope of AB, so I'm going to denote that with a lowercase m for slope. So the slope of side AB. And to find the slope we do the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, the slope formula. So we do 4 minus 2 over 2 minus negative 4. Remember when you subtract, it's like adding the opposite. So this is going to give us 2, 6, which is 1 third. Now if you find the perpendicular, okay, so I denoted that with the perpendicular symbol, we have to take the opposite reciprocal. So I'm going to change this to negative, since this is positive, I'm going to flip it over, that's going to give it us negative 3. So we know that the slope is negative 3, and it goes through the midpoint here, which is negative 1, 3. So if we put that together into an equation, using the point-slope formula, we have y minus 3, so y minus the y-coordinate equals the slope, which is negative 3, times x minus the x-coordinate. Well, x minus a negative 1 is like x plus 1. Now I can simplify this a little bit further by distributing. That gives us negative 3x minus 3. And if I add 3, this 3 over here, to both sides, that's going to give us y equals negative 3x. The negative 3 and the positive 3 cancel, so we're getting y equals negative 3x. So what that means is the y-intercept is 0. It's going right here through the origin. So the line's going to look something like uh, this. Okay, I'm just rough sketching right here. Okay, so that's the equation of one of the perpendicular bisectors. So bisected, cut that in half, and it was perpendicular. Okay, so now what we need to do is find the slope and the midpoint of this side, BC. So let's go ahead and find the midpoint first. So the midpoint of BC, uh, we're going to take the average of the x's, so 2 plus 4 divided by 2, and we're going to take the average of the y's, 4 plus negative 4 divided by 2. So that slope, I'm sorry, not that slope, but the midpoint comes out to 6 over 2, which is 3. 4 plus negative 4 is 0 over 2, which is 0. So it looks like the midpoint is going to be here at 3 comma 0. Okay, so midpoint. We want to find the slope of BC, so we're going to use our slope formula. So slope of BC, that equals y2 minus y1, so 4 minus negative 4, over x2 minus x1, so 2 minus 4. So that comes out to 8 over negative 2, which is negative 4. But the slope of the perpendicular to BC is going to be the opposite reciprocal. So I'm going to flip that over and change the sign, so it's going to be 1 fourth. So if we take the point 3, 0 and a slope of 1 fourth, 
put that together using our uh, point slope form. This is going to be y minus the y coordinate equals the slope times x minus the x coordinate. We get y equals 1 fourth x minus 3 fourths. So now let's go ahead and draw that line in here. So this is going to be a slope of uh, negative 3 fourths. So that's going to be, let's see, uh, y intercept of negative 3 fourths is somewhere right around here. And a slope of rise 1, run 4, something around here. So it looks like it's going to go something like that. Okay, so it looks like they're crossing right here. But let's use the algebra to find that uh, common point of intersection. So we're going to go ahead and do a substitution. If y equals negative 3x, I'm going to put negative 3x in place of y. So let me write that over here. So negative 3x equals 1 fourth x minus 3 fourths. Now here's the thing, a lot of times when students get a lot of fractions, you know, they get a little bit uh, intimidated. But since we have a common denominator of 4, like, uh, like this is over 1, 4, 4, 4 is like our common denominator, I'm going to multiply everything by 4 to clear the fractions. So 4 times negative 3 gives us negative 12x. 4 times 1 fourth is 1, so that's just x. And then these 4s are going to cancel, that just gives us uh, minus 3. So if I subtract uh, x from both sides, I get negative 13, x equals negative 3. Divide both sides by negative 13, x equals 3 thirteenths. If I take 3 thirteenths and I put it back in, either into this equation or this equation, I'll do this one since it's a little bit easier. Uh, negative 3 times 3 thirteenths gives us negative 9 thirteenths. So 3 thirteenths comma negative 9 thirteenths, that's going to be our common point of intersection of our two perpendicular bisectors, and that's going to be our circumcenter. So let's see if that's accurate here. We've got 3 thirteenths, okay, negative 9 thirteenths. Pretty, pretty good, you know, pretty close. Okay, my diagram is a little bit off because the spacing of the x and y scale are not exactly perfect, like on graph paper, right? But that's how you would do it algebraically. So if you want to see how to do this using constructions with a compass and a protractor and a straight edge and all that, go ahead and check out um, the video I did right there. Great job. If you like the way that I teach and you're interested in learning more about algebra, geometry, algebra 2, pre-calculus, ACT math, SAT math, check out more videos on my Mario's Math Tutoring YouTube channel, and I'll see you in the other videos. I'll talk to you then.